Carrie with Canary Quilts, and this is Lady Skellington. This is a free pattern I found at Fat Quarter Shop, and it's right up my alley. It was designed to use Tula Pink fabrics, um, and the pattern was actually designed by Stacy Day, but I have so many Tula Pink scraps that I decided just I was going to download this, and I'm going to put this together because I love skulls, I love Halloween, I love... Tula Pink fabrics. <laughs> so this was perfect for me. But anyway, um, this I started this at the end of December last year, and I've just kind of pulled it out for a little bit, then put it away for a long time, and then just pulled it out again and finished it. So a lot of this is going to be how did I organize my scraps and my fabrics for this and put it together. So that's kind of what I'm showing you in this video so that we get this beautiful end result right here. But anyway... Hit the subscribe button, notification bell, you'll get stuff like this and other fun stuff we got doing. We got quilt alongs, box openings, and just all kinds of fun stuff. So anyway, let's get started. I'm going to start my Tula Pink Scrap Buster number one because I have so much tulip pink fabric left it is just piled up here um and i and i'm not saying it in a bad way i love tulip pink and i have a really good fun first project that is a free pattern that i found by um i think it's by tulip pink i'll have to check that i'm going to use some of this fabric for <laughs> i have done several tulip pink projects in the past year i have all this fabric left i did a king size quilt I did a queen size butterfly quilt. I did the daydreamer quilt. Yeah, that one right there. And I did a black diamond quilt with her fabric. So um, if you're interested in seeing any of those videos, I have links down below. So join me on this one. As I bring you down to my board, I show you all these scraps. I show you the quilt we're going to do and uh, we can get started working on it. But anyway, let's get started. <sighs> Oops, I dropped some. All right, before we get started on my Tula Pink Scrap Buster number one, the Lady Skeleton Wall Quilt, I'm just going to show you the obscene amount of fabric I have left from doing Tula Pink projects. So I did this quilt in a king size. So I have a lot of those colors left. There's some scrap fabrics in there. But I have a lot of this, because that was the backing. And then this is all the fabric that's left from that quilt right there. I mean, this would get this done, for sure. So that's just one quilt kit. My Nebula Block of the Month quilt kit for King Size Quilt. I have this Solids Charm Pack that I was going to use, I think, for my black diamond quilt, and then I didn't. But this is what's left over from my black diamond quilt. I bought charm packs and fat quarters for this. And then these fat quarters came in a sew sampler. And so I've got, here's some charm packs. So I've got all of this fabric. I don't know, this may ha not have pieces that are big enough for some of the pieces in my quilt. And then i got a bunch of white fabrics, not a bunch, a couple of white fabrics I never did use in the quilt that are fat quarters. Here's my background. I did buy that. My butterfly quilt. There's tons of fabrics left in here also. I know it's hard to see, but yep, they're in there. And then my sunshine daydream quilt. Oh my goodness, there is a ton of fabric in here too. From the quilt kit. This is just the quilt kit. So, this is what I'm going to use to make Lady Skellington. And this is a free pattern. Um, I found it at Fat Quarter Shop. I have a link down below if you want to grab the pattern. Um, this pattern is actually made to be made with this charm pack of black um, fabrics by Tula Pink and the Tula's True Colors 10 inch squares. 
So you can buy that 10 inch charm pack also and has all these colors in it. So you can make this with two charm packs if you don't have all these fabrics like I do. But I have all these fabrics, I just didn't have the background. And let me move all this fabric. It's a 34 by 42 inch. You choose your technique of applique that you want to do and I'm going to do the raw edge fusible applique. That's my favorite. I like doing that. But there is needle turn and machine turn applique. And it says it is an intermediate skill level. I would see that if you've never done applique. So here is our key to fabrics. And I have most of these fabrics. I don't have all of them, but I probably have 95%. Like some of these hexes I know I don't have, but that's fine. I can make up for that. We have all our templates right here. None of them need to be like cut and taped together. They're all fit on these pieces of paper. So there's all our templates. Our templates have numbers. Um, they give you other things like this is the top and this is the grain of fabric, stuff like that. Um, but these are by number. But then we have our fabrics, which are by letter. And each fabric, like fabric A, is going to use template 8. And you're going to need... So template 8, you're going to need like one of these and then the mirror image of it. The other thing is, <clears throat> is it's over here also. So we have fabric A. That's template 8. That's a pink. So here's 8. And here's 8, and it says 8A. So you can see how these are mirrored. So it's 8. They're showing you that this template, 8, and you're going to use fabric A. So if you're looking at this, you can come back and look and go, oh, I need this particular fabric right here. So the other thing we have in this little packet is we have this row like the um, layout of how each of these layout pages back here are going to be on our background. So, like this is row one, piece one. So that is this piece right here. So, I'm going to have to figure out how to use these. I've never used something like this before, so it'll be interesting when I get to this point how I'm going to do this. So there we go. There's our templates and we'll have to, um, I'm going to have to trace these onto my fusible webbing and then put them onto my um, fabrics and get it all cut out. Okay, I got my colors picked out. I had most of the colors like I thought I did. But I got my charm packs here and I'm going to need 20 of these to give myself a 4 by 5 um, background. And what I also did was when I pulled the fabrics, I went through, I looked at the template, and then I would go back here to the template and, you know, kind of rearrange fabric, make sure that I had enough fabric. And I think I do for most of these, so we'll see when I actually get to it, but it looked like I had enough fabric for all these templates. Okay, I got all my templates back here transferred over to my fusible webbing which is I'm using light steam seam 2 that's my favorite I have a big roll of it um, that I've been working off of for years all right my system this is my system I hope you understand it so I kind of got pieces everywhere let's start here this is a so you need to take your template, I'm just going to pull one out for example. Say you need template 8, which pretend this is template 8. You're going to need one that's copied onto your fusible like this. And then you're going to need to flip it over and copy it on the back side. So you need one regular, one right side, one reverse side. They call it 1 plus 1R. One I'm calling it L and R, which is left and right, I guess. You could just call it left and right, even though I don't know if this is left or right. It's just the R is the reverse. The other thing I'm doing on here is I put 
the number eight for template eight. So eight is the right side up, eight is the reverse side up. The other thing I did was I put A. So this is gonna go with fabric A. It's gonna be template eight and I've made sure by the L and the R that I've got both sides on here. That's kind of my system for doing that. And then I just started unrolling my roll and copying and doing the same thing. 17, right side up, fabric Z. 17, reverse side, fabric Z. At some point, which is probably next, I need to cut all of these out, set them with their fabrics, and then iron them, get them onto their fabrics. And then we can make the backing and start putting this on as a skull. All right, so it's been six or seven months since I've gotten this out. And I had a big sheet of my um, templates cut on my um, steam seam. And I hadn't put my background together, so I've done that. I got my background together, the black that you see back here. And then I went ahead and cut everything out. And luckily, I did a really good job of labeling the fabrics that I chose. Because I'm not using the fabrics they say in here. I'm using my scraps. So I was able to cut these out, and where I saw an A, I was able to put it with my A. And then I labeled all of them over here also. So I was able to put these all together. And now all I have to do is iron them to all my fabrics here. And then I can start sticking them to that. So hopefully I won't wait another six or seven months. But I don't think I will. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to try to start putting this together. Put it up on my design board and start laying it out. But anyway, just wanted to show you that I'm actually really happy with how I organized all my fabrics so that when I came back I was six months later I was able to just pick it right back up. All right I've got all my um, templates fused to my fabrics I'm ready to go so I put together the layout pages and taped them together and now they're laying on top of my black background so that I know where all these pieces go. All right, this is how I've got myself set up to put together this applique. You saw when I had it laid out, but now I've been working on it and I've got my pile over here of all my templates fused on and I'm just going alphabetically and cutting them out and then laying them underneath here. So you can't see it, but I'm just slowly laying pieces down. All right, you got Future Carry here because I put up in the right-hand corner, do you remember that key I told you about earlier that tells you like where the pieces go and um, the fabrics go? That's up in the upper right-hand corner of your screen right now. It'd been so long that I forgot this existed, so I kind of struggled with um, where to put these pieces because on this key that's laying on my fabric, only the numbers are there, not the fabrics, and several of the templates get reused. So my suggestion to you would be to pull that key out and then mark where all the fabrics go on this layout here that I've got. So you'll have like several 17 templates. So then find all the 17s, check your key and write down which fabrics go there. Because I had a hard time trying to figure it out. I was pulling out the front of the pattern and that was my mistake. And I just wanna let you know Keep in mind, there's that key there to use, and I had just waited so long in this process that I forgot that key was there. All right, got my pieces cut from just my end fabric. I've got 24, which goes there, and that's the only 24 I've had to cut, so I don't need to mark that. So it's going to go just like that. And a 10 N, let's see, is that the one, is going to go like that. And then another one is going to go here. And then these three pieces are going to go over there on that side. And I've marked those over there also. So what I'm doing is I'm peeling the backs off. And very carefully lifting this up 
to see where it goes and I can kind of see it the outline on the other side and I'll lay it down and just get it into into the area I mean I don't try to get it perfectly because once I get this pulled up then I'm gonna start like kind of rearranging things to make them look better so all right here is what it looks like when I peeled away the paper over here I didn't have to peel it away I just pulled it back and then my pieces were basically in the place that in the general vicinity of where they needed to be so what I've done is I've started down here and I'm using this to help me place these um, more correctly I guess if that's a word and I also need to find out which pieces are on top of each other because there's a lot of layering going on here and I've made it up to here you can see there's this black here I need to start filling everything in and I think I need to kind of spread it out just a little bit but that's what I'm doing I'm just using this as my guide to help me reposition everything into place so that I can get something that looks like that also I haven't put these down these don't have the paper pulled off the back I've just kind of placed them because I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit as many as she has and I don't know that I want to I guess but um so I haven't pl actually placed these but when I get this all done then I'm gonna iron it all down and it'll be ready to raw edge applique Right, I'm about halfway through raw edge appliquing this. I'm using my quilting foot. I'm using an invisible thread, which usually isn't my friend, but it's going okay today. I have a lime green bottom line thread. Whoops, that's my foot. In the bobbin, <clears throat> because I felt like that would be, with all these colors, that would probably be, if it bled through, that'd be the best one to bleed through. Uh, but it's not really bleeding through. And then my object, what I'm doing, I guess, is trying to just stay on the outside of these, the lines or the fabrics that are on top of each other. So I kind of like come down here and then I'll go up and around and then backtrack and come back. I'm not going up and around on the inside of these. That's just how I'm doing it. And um, I'm just kind of going slowly here. So since I have such a love-hate relationship with uh, invisible thread, what I'm doing is I'm just staying on the outside and I'm moving from piece to piece so that I don't have to stop and start my thread. That's where I tend to have the biggest issue is when that happens. You know, and I use the cutter and then I have to, seems like I have to re-thread, but it just kind of leads me all the way around the quilt and I end up not really having to start and stop anywhere so I'm coming up to the two little dots in the nose there and you can't see it but there's a seam a black seam right there and that's what I'm following so that that thread will sink down into the seam and you won't see it as much for all the other little like dots and stuff that are the polka dots there that are down in the mouth I just chose the shortest path um, from one piece to the other to get out there and um, raw edge applique those pieces. It turned out really nice. All right, I'm at my machine. I am ready to start quilting this. I have sandwiched it with my batting and my backing is some fabric I had. <laughs> Walking Dead. I had enough to do the back and I needed to use it up. So there we go. That came from a stash. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to start in the center and go all the way up through the center and just outline everything here and just make it pop off of that black. Maybe go over these, um, these lines where I had to do the uh, invisible thread. I'll go over those. Maybe I'll kind of hide those, but I'm not too worried about it. And then I'll come out and I'm going to go around the outside the edge and then I'm gonna have to decide what I want to do out here in the blank space but for now I am literally just going to outline everything just to get these um, shapes and colors to pop off that black background whoops guess I can't use it like that 
So I'm just starting at the bottom and I'm going to follow the black around the outside of all of these pieces here. And it's just going to kind of lead me to where it leads me. Um, and it's I'm going pretty much right next to them. So I just went out on that seam and circled around those. And um, as you can see, I'm just following the black on the outside of the pieces. And then down here, I'm using that uh, shortcut to each one of these circles that I used when I was raw edge applique. And then it covers it with the black thread that I'm using for quilting. It's fun. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy like, it feels like coloring. All right, I finished going around all the pieces on the inside of Lady Skellington. Now all I'm doing is echoing about a half an inch on the outside of all those pieces, just all the way around her. If you haven't noticed, I did speed the video up about five times. So it looks like I'm going fast, but I'm really, really kind of taking my time. I really enjoy um, quilting like this. For the outside blank space, I'm just starting on the edge and I'm coming in and I'm doing a big circle. I go in, I stop, and then I swirl myself back out. And then I come out and do another one. And I did that all the way around it. There she is, all finished. Got her bound in some hexy print from Tula Pink that I had left over from the Nebula block of the month I did a couple years ago. Um, as we move in, you can see that quilting that I was just doing, the curly cues, which are pretty easy to do. You just kind of go around, stop, and come back out of your circle. Go to the next one. So not too hard. You can see the outline of the quilting there around the edge. And then my applique. And you can't really see those lines that, you know, where I have to actually leave and go out to go around those circles. There's the seam in the middle by the nose that I talked about in uh, when I was doing the applique and quilting. But yeah, from a distance, you just can't see that. So I'm happy. I, it took me eight months with a six month break just because I got really busy and uh, I'm glad I picked it back up and finished it. It's not too hard. It takes some time, but it's a lot of fun to create it. Um, work with it and make this beautiful quilt. So don't forget that this is a free pattern over at Fat Quarter Shop and Free Spirit Fabrics. I have the links down below and um, you can find it there. It does um, suggest a layer cake from Tula Pink, but you really could use scraps or any material you want. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate you. Let me know what you think and um, hit the subscribe button, notification bell. You'll get notified of this type of content and others that we got going on here. It's a lot of fun. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.